let's take a look at some wireframe enhancements, right? We're always using wireframe to help kind of uh, build tool paths or to uh, speed up what we're working on. Um, there's a couple of specific enhancements this year. Uh, one of them is very much like the chaining enhancements. So curve all edges, if you pick a face with curve all edges, you now have the ability to sell, tell it to loop the inside or the outside or both inside and outside edges. So very much like the filters in your chaining dialog, you can filter it down and it really speeds up building your um, wireframe geometry without creating a bunch of additional geometry that maybe you didn't need. Another cool one is the uh, flow lines. So if you've never used flow lines, uh, you can come in and grab a face and it's going to show you the UV curves, the underlying NURB surface curves that defined that shape, which is useful for some, some uh, toolpath like the flow multi-axis toolpath will follow those naturally. Well, there's a new command called patch boundaries. And this new option still gives you the curves, but instead of spacing them out based on maybe a chord height or a distance or equally spacing them, it's actually using the definition of the NURB surface underneath. And you'll notice it is naturally uh, tighter uh, spacing on those curves, but it's representing the true definition, not an approximation of the definition, not a representation. It's, it's actually just displaying the UV curves as they're defined in the solid model. So uh, if you're uh, doing a lot with the UV curves, that's going to be a lot faster to work with on those flow lines. When you're sketching or doing wireframe geometry, I use a divide a lot, right? You just drag through some entities to, to trim it. You can now, if you need to, back up over the edges and it undoes those cuts. In fact, if you uh, see, you can kind of see those dots being left behind. Drag over them, they go through, and then the undo and redo command, control Z and control Y also make that work and it automatically goes through and uh, does them one at a time. So m most of the problem, I mean divide so easy to use but most of the time what I find is that the issue with divide is not how easy it is to use it's how either I bump my mouse or I uh, pick up an extra entity at the end after I've cut like the 12 things I want. So now with undo, redo, or just drag it backwards a little bit, you can back up and grab exactly what you want without having to start over if you make a little mistake. So some nice enhancements to make wireframe creation a little bit easier, a little bit more powerful. Um, a lot of times with wireframe, though, uh, I find myself using things like fonts, right? I want to make a, a single stroke font that I can then use to do, for example, an engraving toolpath. So I've got a part here, and this is a specification that I received from my customer. They specified where they want the engraving done, the text that I'm supposed to put on there, they told me they want 12 point font, um, but it's important to make sure I get it right and I don't spend a bunch of time on it and everything. I've been getting uh, uh, complaints about the, the, the design and the style of fonts. So let's, let's build this on this part real quick. This is, I've actually got the part in SOLIDWORKS. The drawing is in SOLIDWORKS. And so if I come and I just do a copy off of the, fa the face of the part or from a document or whatever I've got, jump over into Mastercam. Uh, this is where I'm going to create my letters. Now this applies to notes and uh, wireframe uh, fonts. But I'll paste in my material or my my note. Notice here it says the diameter didn't pick up the symbol right. So I'll jump in and start changing the symbol. I got uh, plus minus here is there we go, and then degrees. All right, so there's my uh, text. That's what I want the text to show. But I'm in Arial right now, which is a true type font. I can do 12 point Arial, but notice it's a, it's a double stroke. I would have to go around the perimeter of every letter, meaning I'm basically drawing every letter twice. If I have a single stroke font, that's going to work a lot better. So let's take a look at some of the single stroke options. Uh, I've got several to choose from. 
Uh, we've always had these single stroke fonts available. So you've got like the stick font, but it looks very technical. It doesn't look quite as, as pretty. Uh, you've got like a block font, but it throws an error message about not having those symbols. The diameter plus minus and degrees those are missing. Uh, even some of the double stroke fonts don't have everything we need. And so what, Sol what Mastercam did this year was introduced a brand new type of font. And it's called the OLF Simple Sans CJKOC Truth Type font. Now, all of that is not important. What's important is it's a single stroke font. It's got a huge library of symbols. It looks like Arial. So it's very, uh, 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 you know, mainstream. It doesn't look like overly technical, you know, drafting type style letters. It's just a very easy to read font. And like I said, it is single stroke. Now, not only does it have all the characters you probably would want, it's also got a huge symbol library to go along with it. It's got 35,000 characters in this thing. So no matter what type of engraving you're trying to do, and no matter who you're doing it for or where it's gonna end up, you should be able to get a really nice engraving with a consistent font using this new TrueType font. Now, if you can't remember the name exactly, don't worry, it's the only one listed up there with the other various standard fonts that are available. Uh, take a look at that and use it.